Hello, hey, uh, so last video I did a servo configuration tutorial. This video is going to be a little different. It's going to be more of a discussion on how I implemented a distance sensor in the same FMUK66 flight management unit. If you like the content and you like where this channel is going, hit the subscribe button and, and like this video. I'm just going to go over some how I configured a distance sensor with PixHawk in the PX4 stack. So I use the VL53L1X distance sensor. It's made by ST. So for anyone not familiar, the VL53L1X is a time of flight ranging distance sensor. So it basically, um, in a nutshell, you, it's, um, it's picking up the reflection of uh, laser or light. And um, so there's, these, there's this array of, um, they call them SPADs. And so you have this like 16 by 16 array that's uh, picking up the reflections and so the the ST ultralight driver I think by default you you set a range of interest which in, incorporates the the uh, 16 by 16 block and so that gives you the largest field of view available which is a, I think on the the L1X is like 27 degrees you know if you're more worried about resolution Rather than your initial field of view, you start to break down the the region of interest into sections, like four by sixteen, and then so you start ranging. You capture your distance um, measurement, then you stop ranging, and then you adjust your region of interest. Um, so you move that block, the center of that four by sixteen block, within the SPAD array. So you keep doing this and then you end up getting more resolution, whereas if you have a 16 by 16 from the get-go, um, you're not going to have a whole lot of uh, resolution. You're not going to pick up smaller objects probably. So I defaulted to the 16 by 16 uh, in this implementation. So I haven't really messed with setting the region of interest yet. I'd like to. I'd like to get a, uh, an array of these sensors and set up 2D LiDAR on this drone. So that you offset them by 20 degrees, and then uh, you go through the regions of interest simultaneously on each sensor. And so um, you do have a timing budget that you have to kind of juggle. So the timing budget just, um, it's the measurement period. So the larger the timing budget, um, the longer distance you can get out of the sensor, uh, you have more time to measure, right? Now, the shorter timing budget, um, it's much faster, right? And you'll get more resolution, um, but you need to have a smaller region of interest, I think. Um, I think that's how the driver manual uh, put it, but I'd have to look at it. So, on my implementation, I had the timing budget to 20 milliseconds, which is really short. Um, and I have the inner measurement period set to 25 milliseconds, so I have a little bit of time between rangings. Got a little bit of a buffer there. Um, in the future, I'd like to play with the region of interest changing dynamically, so that'll give you a little bit more resolution, but uh, it'll reduce the range that you can read at. So I think like a 12 millisecond um, timing budget, you're not going to really reach out past a meter probably. But I'd like to test that, and I'd like to test it in an array of these sensors. Um, so I'll put a link to uh, um, some information I found on, on messing with the region of interest in the description. The uh, board that I got was off of Pesky Products. I'll put a link in the description. So um, the Pesky Products version was not 5 volts tolerant, and the I2C bus on the... FM UK 66 is 5 volts, so I had to put a diode in series. Uh, I just didn't like a voltage divider circuit. It, when I put a voltage divider, the chip wouldn't recognize the uh, I2C device, and it looks like the I2C bus was not powered at all. So the diode brought the voltage down to something the, the VL53L1X could um, power on with. As you can see, I have it uh, right above my camera and so it's anything the camera is going to be focused on you're going to get range values for it so it's a really tiny version uh, I know the 
the other boards out there are a little bit larger. They might have GPIO support. This one just has um, your I2C, serial data, serial clock, and then your interrupt, and that's pretty much it. So you're gonna get a little more functionality out of some of the other ones out there. This one is good for small, lightweight, fast applications. So the driver is already implemented and uh, as of I think like 1.10, um, but if you have like the latest, it's like 1.11.3 PX4, that should have the distance sensor driver already there. They have the VL53L1X and the VL53L0X. Um, so um, it looks like they had ported the driver from the older chip. And so I made some changes. Um, I ended up using like a short, shorter distance range mode. The theoretical max of the, the uh, L1X is four meters. And so I ended up just going into a short range distance mode, which is theoretically two meters. Uh, I tested it and I got about like maybe 1.8 meters. Uh, keep in mind this is not with any calibration. Uh, I'm using the ST Ultralight driver. That's the version that was baked into the latest PixHawk PX4 release. And a uh, pretty easy driver to work with. Uh, I did have to make some changes to the driver as is in PX4. So I ended up um, modifying the inner measurement period. Um, give it a little bit more time between rangings. And I think that helps with reliability.